Sage Wanderer here coming at you from Shawnee, Oklahoma. So um, I wanted to talk about something that I think will occur in the near future. So many of you know I predicted a lot of what is going on today. Um, I told you three years ago Antifa was going to try to overthrow our civilization and destroy it and replace it with a uh, with a communist utopia that they want a Bolshevik revolution and they're prepared to dedicate their lives to such a prospect. And so on that note, I thought I would tell you what I believe is next in the civil unrest. So just to let you know where we're at, this is uh, September of 2020 leading up to the 2020 election. And I believe that the civil unrest is going to tamp down for a moment because they're getting ready for something much bigger. A lot of this uh, recent, these recent moves to come into um, where middle class people eat and shop and accost them while they're having their uh, dinner or uh, coming up and, uh, you know, taking their drink right out of their hand and drinking it or throwing it on the ground and, you know, basically turning over tables, large mobs coming in and uh, hitting, uh, you know, restaurant areas and turning over tables, especially with outdoor dining. And um, this is kind of a, I believe, a dress rehearsal for what they're going to do next. So they don't want four more years of Trump. They being all of the Democrats, the deep state, the far left, the Antifa and the whatnots, okay? Um, people I consider the dregs of society, okay? They don't want four more years of Trump. They've made that perfectly clear. So they're willing to pull out all the stops and do whatever it takes to make sure that we don't get a four more uh, four more years of Donald Trump in the White House. So we've heard people uh, like uh, Nancy Pelosi and um, oh, what's the other one? Uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, Joe Biden himself said that they would dig Donald Trump out of the White House and force him to leave and that they intend to contest the election regardless of what it appears, uh, you know, they're not going to stop until all of the votes are counted. So their hope is to drive us to a constitutional um, crisis by not having a certified election by the by the uh, deadline, and uh, I don't know. Some of us have lived through some of this uh, before in the hanging Chad of the uh, of the Gore Bush fiasco, and I believe that was the year two thousand when that election happened. So they've got this mail in voting fraud. They're trying to work. They're trying to work the uh, you know every angle they can, right? And so this is what Antifa was really, as far as the, the people in charge, this is what Antifa has been training for. Antifa and Black Lives Matter, all of this civil unrest has been training for what they're going to do next, which is one of the most important parts of their plan to uh, stop a Donald Trump ascension to the White House for another four years, is that they're going to utilize these mobs to interfere with voters. So uh, statistically speaking, uh, I think most people agree, statisticians anyway, that Trump supporters are more likely to vote in person. Older voters are more likely to vote in person. And um, younger voters and Biden supporters and Bernie boys and, and high-tech people are more comfortable with remote voting, especially during the pandemic. And so at any rate, um, Antifa will be, I believe, and I'm predicting that Antifa and Black, Black Lives Matter mobs will be used to intimidate voters on the election day at the polls, which is extremely illegal, but so is torching cities. So is cementing shut the doors of a police station and setting it on fire. But just because it's illegal doesn't mean it's stopping them from doing it anyway. So are you know is the left above straight up voter intimidation and the blocking of polls? I mean, if if they'll block city streets and not allow you to come through, if they'll take over restaurants and demand that you pledge allegiance to Black Lives Matter or face their wrath, why wouldn't they put on their masks and uh, you know potentially even show up armed? 
which is extremely illegal, to the polling places and try to intimidate older Trump voters and make them stay home uh, or try to even bring about social unrest so there can't be any voting in person. And if you didn't get your voter uh, uh, ballot in, your, if you didn't get your mail-in ballot in by the deadline, then your vote doesn't count. And so, um, yeah, they're going to do what they can to attack polling places. That's my opinion. It's based on what I've heard them threaten that they would do. It's based on a hunch to a great degree. You know, on some of this stuff, I just know because I know. And it's because I've been studying Antifa for a long time. Um, I, you know, many of you know that uh, I lived in uh, the Willamette Valley, the Portland Salem area uh, for five years, and that uh, I was actually born in that part of the country, even though my family are Okies. <clears throat> That's what they called us anyway when I was a kid. You bunch of Okies or Arkies that we were both. My mom, my mom's side are Arkies and my dad's side were Okies. But anyway, um, you know, knowing how Bolsheviks feel about uh, the voting process, they don't care about your vote. They don't intend to get their guy in by voting. In fact, they've taken to the streets these Antifa and Black Lives, Matters, uh, Black Lives Matter people because they've come to the conclusion that they believe that voting doesn't work, that they can't get their agenda across, they can't get what they want because the, um, you know, the voting system is in their way and they intend to tear it down. So, heck yeah, why wouldn't they attack polling places? So, you know, the question is, will police intervene? Will it be up to neighborhoods to take their polling places back? Because we're talking about schools and fire stations and, you know, areas uh, close to home in your neighborhood could be targets of far left extremists trying to, to suppress uh, the vote in Trump areas. You know, there's this weird thing that the leftists have been doing for really for many, many years is that they accuse you of doing what they intend to do themselves. So they kind of almost tell you what they're planning by accusing you of what they're doing. Uh, they're in bed with China, so they in accuse Trump of being in bed with Russia, right? They're all, they're all dirty and take bribes, so they're trying to accuse Trump of being dirty and taking bribes, right? So, you know, they are violent protesters, but when we show up to peaceably assemble with our firearms, they call it a violent assembly, right? But it's them that's being violent with ball bats and and uh, and clubs and sticks and bombs and Molotov cocktails now and gunplay with full, you know, <sighs> you know, rifle battles in the street, okay? This is the stuff that's, that they're doing and they're accusing us of it. So, uh, they're accusing Trump of voter suppression. They're going to continue that while they themselves operate in voter suppression, voter fraud, and voter manipulation. Um, I think the only way we make it through this without uh, this breaking out into civil war is if Trump has a runaway landslide, no hands, you know, hands down, no contested uh, victory. It, it needs to be a landslide, but I still think things are so close that even with so many people flipping to Trump's side over the rioting and the civil unrest, you know, uh, many of the liberals now buying guns and kind of becoming conservatives because they get it now. Um, I don't know that that's enough to outdo the cheating and the scamming that the, that the Democrats are going to do to try to put their man in office. And so, with, with that in mind, they're never going to cede the election. They're never going to concede, concede the election to Donald Trump. And uh, they're going to fight us uh, because that's what they accuse him of doing. They're going to say he, he's not going to step down. We're going to have to fight him. But in fact, it's them that's doing this. So I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you follow that twisted logic, but discernible pattern for the left is that they do, uh, they do the things that they accuse their opponents of doing even though their opponents aren't doing them they themselves are actually doing them so i expect violent voter suppression i expect a uh, voter uh, theft of uh, of ballots cuz see the thing is they send the ballots out by mail so if you know what days they're they're uh, 
sending them out, you can just intercept people's mailboxes. People don't have, don't have locks on their mailboxes. So ballot theft is how they do it in Oregon. They go into the areas that support, you know, conservative ideologies and, you know, the richer, whiter neighborhoods. And they, of course, everything's white in Oregon, but the rich neighborhoods. <clears throat> and they, um, and they steal the ballots right out of your mailbox. So you can't vote. And um, at any rate, yeah, I just want to lay that prediction on the line. I could be wrong. I'll be there the day after the election if I don't see any signs of, uh, of mob uh, intimidation at the polls, then uh, you'll you'll hear from me that I was wrong. It's just a prediction, and you know God didn't tell me. It's a hunch. Um, Antifa told me, you know, years ago that this was part of the plan. Is that you know you're going to vote who we tell you to vote for. Or you're not going to get to vote. That's how it works in socialist. You know, you can vote for guy number one, or you can vote for guy number one, or you can go to the gulag. <laughs> so. That's what's up with that on this first rainy day in Oklahoma. God save our republic, and if, if Lord, if that's not in your will, then uh, God bless the new republic.